Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we are here today at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And we're here today with Dr. Darren Croft, Research Associate. Dr. Croft, thanks for taking time and talking with us. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for coming down and learning a little bit about sharks. You just must have one of the coolest jobs in the world. Do you want to tell us what you do here exactly? Well, I do a little bit of everything, which I think is what I like so much about my job. Across, across the street, I'm a professor at Case Western University, and I teach anatomy to medical students. And over here at the Museum of Natural History, I do research down in the collections here, because we're all basically the same when you get through the skin. We're all the same skin and bones. Yeah, we really are. And, and part of what you do here is not just look at human species. You're looking at, at a lot of different animals. And... Now you're looking at sharks a lot, aren't you here? Exactly, yeah. And this, if you're into sharks, this is really the place to be. We've got a two-for-one exhibit going here. We have Megalodon behind me, and then just around the corner, Sharkabet, which is an alphabet of sharks from A to Z. So no matter how old you are, it's really a great place to come and learn a little bit about sharks. This Megalodon is really fascinating. This is, this is a shark that would, became extinct, what, about 2 million years ago? That's right. About 2 million years. goes around for about 17 million years, and it ranged throughout the world. And it seemed to be pretty successful for a long time, and then almost all of a sudden it just went extinct two million years ago. We're not exactly sure why. Well, talk about that a little, because we have to learn something about why these species come and go, so it affects our, our current life, doesn't it? That's exactly right. One of the things that we do as paleontologists, which is what I am, is try to figure out what are the things that cause extinction. With Megalodon, there are a few different possibilities. One is climate change, something that's very timely now. In the time of Megalodon, it was getting colder instead of warmer, and so that might have been bad news for Megalodon. The continents had shifted a little bit, which changed ocean currents, and that meant their main prey, which were whales, were living in different spots, so that could also do it. And yet another possibility is that the sea levels were going down, and they had less area to raise their young. They didn't really raise them, but they, they have nursery areas where the young would develop. And that's really timely now because a lot of pollution is taking place in these nursery areas today, endangering a lot of sharks now. This was a very big shark. This was, this was maybe the the king of the seas. I mean, nobody could argue with this. This this was huge, right? I mean, you can walk through it in this exhibit. Megalodon was definitely in charge of the oceans back when it was alive in the Miocene. It was 60 feet long, which is about the size of an adult sperm whale. And this thing would have eaten whales half its size. Just an amazing animal that would have been really cool to see alive if, at a safe distance, of course. <laughs> Talk about what this exhibit has here, because you can actually, right behind you are the teeth, the big open mouth, and you walk into it. Big warning. <laughs> what, tell us what else you have in this exhibit here. Yeah, you can see a lot of things. You mentioned there's this model behind me, so you can get a feel what it would have been like going through the mouth of a megadon and even going out the other end. You can see models of sharks that are alive today. There's a neat little series of stations over one side where you can look at fossil shark teeth from all sorts of different sharks. And if you had some that you collected maybe down on the coast of Florida or North Carolina, you can bring them in and identify them. What do you have with you there? It looks like you've got a, a very tiny little shark tooth, huh? <laughs> yeah, this is a megalodon tooth. It's actually a cast because the real ones are hard to come by. But this is the size of an adult megalodon tooth. This animal would have had about 45 of these in its mouth when it was alive in the front row. And a typical shark would have had six or seven rows. So you do the math on that, 270-some teeth at any one time. And that's one big difference between sharks and us. We just have two sets. Shark loses a tooth, no big deal, because a new one's going to pop up just behind it. Yeah, you're finding shark teeth all over the place, right? I mean, do they just lose them, replace them, or are they just born with, the, with all these different sets and they just lose them as they go? Sharks will develop them as they get older, and they just keep losing them, replacing them constantly. And that's why you can find them all over the place in the oceans if you have the right conditions for preserving teeth. Right behind you, you see the different shark mouths, and you can look at those teeth, all the different sizes of uh, the sharks. Exactly. The series of jaws behind me shows different ages of megalodon, from a young, small one, only 30 feet long, up to the big boy, it was 60 feet long. Talk about the other exhibit that we have over here, uh, Sharkabet, which is related, but it's really quite different, isn't it? Yeah, this is something we don't often get a chance to do at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. That's to have two traveling exhibits that are related to each other in terms of content. And Sharkabet walks through the entire alphabet from A to Z with an example of the shark family for each one. And they're painted in just outstanding color by a really neat artist known as Ray Troll, who was just here a couple weeks ago. So you get to meet this guy. These are like fantasy representations, A to Z. He must be a crazy guy. Ray Troll, he really is. He, I think he's a self-described hippie. But he has this great blend of art and science, and that's really hard to come by. And it's something that we really appreciate as scientists, because having something so visual is a great way to bring the science to the people at large. These are great exhibits here. They look beautiful. The kids are having fun here. Thanks for taking time with us, Doctor, and, and walking us through it all. Oh, you're welcome. I really appreciate you coming on down. 
I can't wait to look further. Thanks so much. Sure thing. Bye-bye. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.